believe in Jackson Pollock. There's you, and there's the painting in you. You need me, you need me, you need me. Marsha Gay Harden won an Oscar for her role as artist Lee Krasner, opposite Ed Harris in the movie Pollock. Turns out, Harden is quite the artist herself, both on screen and off. Seth Doan has a Sunday profile. <sighs> That's so hard. This is one Marcia Gay Harden role you may not be familiar with, amateur potter. I'm a practical potter, so I like to do things that you can use. The Oscar and Tony Award winning actor had come on vacation with her kids, Layla, Julita, and Hudson Harden Shields, to Faenza in Italy, where local artisans have been making ceramics since the first century BC. The main thing our teacher said was this Kalva, Kalva, because we're all Americans, so we're like, hurry up! Harden's love of pottery began in the 1990s in New York while at a Broadway show. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get smaller at the top, and that means you have to learn to pull the clay in a bit. I feel like we're peeking under the Christmas tree right now. <laughs> Hold on. Yep, that's me. At Fienza Art Ceramic Center, oh, they were revealing a week's work. I like the clay. And another side of Harden. When I look at my mom, I think of her in her, you know, clay-covered pants and bandana and, like, some old sweatshirt, you know, throwing pots and, and sort of being that, like, down-to-earth person that we know well, is really... What's your mom like as a mom? When we started asking about her, she was just off-camera. <laughs> she was right there. <laughs> Hi. Hi, guys. <laughs> What is she like as a mom? Come on, it's that playful side, they say, that often does not come across in her roles. I used to think, because I'm brunette, you always cast brunettes as a serious woman. Something necessarily true, but I just think I've been cast in a way that has a lot of gravitas. Harden got her break playing the femme fatale in the 1990 film Miller's Crossing, opposite Gabriel Byrne. Thing that you don't like me seeing Leo because you're jealous. Really? You've got a heart, even though maybe small to people. The Coen brothers gave you a chance for the world to see what you could do. They, they opened a door. They gave me a chance to play. You know, you want to be seen. And I think that's one of the best gifts we can give to somebody is to see them. I see you. And she's been seen a lot. I see the head. She won her Oscar for portraying Lee Krasner in Pollock. You're not just randomly putting paint on the canvas. You're painting something. She got the Tony for God of Carnage on Broadway. I told you, Michael. Everything is for sale. On TV, she's been a socialite, a hard edge reporter. I'm writing the piece, Fred. But it's good for your nephew. I don't know yet. But there's nothing you can do about it either way. There have been crime dramas, medical dramas. And just drama dramas. You've done a lot. I do. I'm a bit of a workaholic. Can you remember all these parts yeah. that you played? Yeah. Have you ever counted them up? Mm -hmm. Count me. I think I'm not interested. Is that awful? What do you mean? Once it's done, it's done? Yeah. Your Honor, dismissing this lawsuit... That She's now on to her next role, lawyer Margaret Wright in CBS's So Help Me Talk. They're trying to scare us. But we don't scare. Oh, God, I have a huge presentation. We were on the set in Vancouver as they were shooting season two. I like that she is um, hoity-toity and flawed at the same time. In the series, Pardon's character hires her son to be a private investigator for her firm. They were ridiculous. Fantastic. Just keep telling yourself that. Why don't you let me talk me into these things? Family drama and a fair share of mishaps ensue. There's a lot of physical comedy in this role. Isn't it fun? I love the physical comedy. For me, it's a blast. After a cut is finished, I just feel like I hear someone like, shameless, shameless, like I have to go. What do you mean? It was too much. What do you mean falling over the chair and jumping in? It was too much. You know what I mean? Like, it was, what was it funny? Was it funny? Until now, that side of Hardin's personality has largely been reserved for her off-screen life. 
this is the first time I've sort of opened up my private life to so Why? many people. Why? Um, to protect me and my kids, because it's more like a celebrity than an actor. Maybe. What do you mean by that? What's the distinction? Well, an actor works. An actor has a script. An actor approaches a role. A celebrity is sort of it's, it's who they are. It's their life. And to me, they don't really need to go together. What drives is because it's right. Because what is happening right now is wrong. But Harden has been uncharacteristically public about her family recently, sharing during a televised fundraiser that all three of her kids identify as queer. For which I've been accused of being a groomer. You know, wouldn't we all be so lucky to just groom our little children to be whatever? Like, it's such Bullshit. as if people's gender identities are able to be manipulated. My eldest child uses they them pronouns and my son is gay and my youngest daughter I would say is fluid, understands loving a human being. So I love that about them. It's a, but it was a process for you. It's a process to be the parent I want to be in it. So what guides you how did you They they guide me and my love of them guides me because what's the alternative? Will you be who you are and go outside of this house then? Where'd my kids go? Harden divorced in 2012 from director Thaddeus Shio. Now 64, she calls herself a single mom. This is also what I always have. From what we saw, the role of caregiver comes naturally. Chocolates for the TV crew in her fake office. When I come back after a week or two and they're empty, I feel so happy. They can be long days of shooting. She's on location, sometimes for months. You finished last night at 11.30 at night, yeah. and you could have been so We did stop by. Are you kidding yeah. me? No, we did So she finds community in something familiar. People are like real artists here. A local pottery studio in Vancouver. You've got your initials here. I do. I, my um, daughter gave me this stamp that I have. Oh, in her own line. Yeah. Coming to the shoes. What is it? Yeah, no, no, Marcia Gay Harden does put her own stamp on whatever she does, even if it means removing a bit of herself in the process. I like to garden. I like to do pottery. These are slightly isolationist things to do. Because otherwise, I do think one can start worrying too much about what they all think, right? What people say about me and do they like my whatever. It's not me. We lost another member of our Sunday morning family last week. E.S. Lamoureux III died at home on Martha's Vineyard. He was 89. Bud Lamoureux began his long career at CBS in the early days of TV news as a writer for Walter Cronkite. Before joining correspondent Haywood Hale Broom to travel the country, telling offbeat stories about sports, Practice doesn't always make perfect. This is Haywood Hale Brown at the Wrist Wrestling Championships in Petaluma, California. In 1979, anchor Charles Peralt invited Bud to come tell his stories on a new program called Sunday Morning, which he would do and memorably. Sports was Lamoureux's first love. On a chill autumn afternoon in night baseball, Ted Williams came to bat for the last time. Oh, it is golf. Golf. He started playing golf about the time he learned to walk. By now, his father says, Tiger's an old timer. What's the club and horse racing were his passions? Well, he looks like a million, doesn't he? He does look like a million. We don't get excited in this town. After that, he headed to Nebraska to tell stories with contributor Roger Welsh. And last year, Bud decided it was time to tell his own story in a book, which he did. Goodbye, and thank you, old friend. To dream the impossible dream To fight the unbeatable toe to bear with unbearable sorrow, to run with a break in 